Welcome to Brojo Builds, and today I wanted to show the rear suspension on the Chevette. Um, I had a few guys ask me over the past few months about the how the back half of the car was set up. It's changing now, but it's good that I go over how it was, and then as the changes come, um, I'll go over the, what's, the, what's different. But again, I'll let you guys know right now. What's well, going to be changing? Um, if you don't mind, I've been cleaning my garage, so my garage is a little bit of a mess. Yeah, a 400 short block here, a 350, four bolt main, and two more motors over there. I got a Toro 400 that's taken apart. That needs to get back together and put back together. So 700 R4 over there, 480 for a customer over here. So. I'm always busy working and hustling, and I have had a fairly decent sized mess growing in here, and um, I need a clear spot to put another vehicle, so uh, that's why I'm trying to clean up in here, make some room so I can still do some work, and at the same time, get things accomplished. So... What was in the back of this car? How was the rear suspension set up? So, a lot of it is still clouded in mystery, to be honest with you. Because when I got this vehicle, it was kind of semi-built. Someone already had put the motor in the car. And someone kind of had cobbled something together. Um, it wasn't sorted out by no means, though. It had a different rear end in it. It had... Uh, you know, the motor and drivetrain is completely different since then. But I had the rear springs in the car since I had the car. And I bought the car in 2015. So I've been racing it from 2015 till now, pretty much, with the same rear suspension that I'm going to show you right now. So uh, these were the slapper bars that were in it. I got, got it with slapper bars, the same exact slapper bars, but uh, I have modified them to make it work better for this application. So, on. Um, yeah, we just talked about this and I explained about the leaf spring situation a little bit later. So, the leaf spring was mounted on top of the axle, like how you have in most trucks, right? You know, like most trucks have the differential under the spring. That's how this was set up. And um, this was the slapper bar that was on it. I cut it and modified it so that the the actual slapper bar portion, the bushing, will was sitting right under the spring eye, and pretty much was there was already a little bit of tension on it already. There's some adjustment built on the pad itself, but um, I always kept it semi preloaded, and it always worked for me. Um, I had put brand new shocks in it because the old shocks were blown. And these are cheap, like $10 shocks. But when I took this all apart, I came out to realize that uh, this shock was pretty much no better. It's pretty much blown. And this one, if you see over here, is completely collapsed. Oh, my tick my tick tape. Uh, tick, uh, but yeah, uh, this one's completely collapsed. This one doesn't even work like a shock absorber anymore. So yeah, I modified the slapper bars to give me some preload. And um, that was pretty much it for what I did for the slapper bars. Put fresh shocks, which are you know obviously were blown. And they've probably been blown for a little bit, for a little while now. Uh, under here. Let me... Uh, Kind of dark. Let's see if I get the drop light. All right. So it had a flat leaf spring that was 48 inches long and two and a half inches wide. So if you guys know anything about leaf springs, uh, your typical passenger car leaf spring is two and a half inches wide. And this one was 48 inches, 48 inches long and was set up like a mono leaf. It was a uh, Someone pulled all the leaves out of it, and it was just one single leaf. And 
the the main reason why I decided to change this whole setup is because the car was going a lot f pretty fast, and this was the monstrosity I had going on in the back, and uh, it was pretty much a, a spring bucket, right? And they mounted a little rubber pad in there, and the spring just sat in there. That's it. The and you know it was kind of booger welded on top of that, but the spring just sat in place, and it just sat in the pocket there, and it was not the safest thing in the world. So, um, I'm actually I already ordered a uh, Calvert uh, split mono lease for the back, and I'm gonna be redoing the shackle assembly back here to a traditional shackle. And the spring will be mounted under the axle. And doing it that way will actually help me give me more adjustability later. I also plan on putting a decent set of shocks back here. And actually making the car uh, most safe. You know, my channel is called Bro Joe Builds. But you never want to compromise safety. You know, you, if there's anywhere to invest is safety. Because... Uh, I'm a father of of three, two two boys and a young girl that I just had not even just a year ago. Um, and the last thing I need is to not come home because I went racing, I went to have fun, but couldn't come back home because I, you know, overlooked things that should have been overlooked. So it was just your typical cyber bars. A 48-inch uh, monoleaf leaf spring and mounted over the axle, as you see here. It had a, oop, it had uh, I have a spring pad on the top and a spring pad on the bottom. And this is was for the leaf spring, and this was to uh, locate the the traction bar. These are the mounts for the woolly bars that I had at one point, but I was able to good set the car up and control it so that it worked. And that's pretty much it. If you look around this car, this car is very simple. You know, this is a shortened eight and a half, and has a S10 S10 length axles in it. So, I mean, anything I need for this vehicle. Like, I was able to get it, you know, readily readily available. And if you look down the car, you see that this car is all still factory floor pan all the way through. The only part that's replaced is up by the front, uh, where you're, you know, front driver and passenger. It was replaced with flat sheet metal because of, uh, you know, these cars weren't known to uh, stay solid for long they start to rot out but yeah that's pretty much it this is that's all i have for you know rear suspension in the back and you know in the past but going forward because the car is getting faster and uh, like i said safety is important um i'm planning on uh upgrading the car and Putting uh, Calvert model leafs and uh, even Calvert traction bars. So um, these are going to be the new uh, spring shackle locators that I had made up between um, me and my father. I designed it, and then uh, we had a machine machinist uh, cut us a bushing. And, uh, yeah, that's me mounted under with well, just normal shackles. and So, yeah, never sacrifice safety. Long story short, never sacrifice safety for, you know, for your, your enjoyment, you could say. Um, right now I'm just waiting for the leaf springs. And then I will set up the rear of the car and upgrade the fuel system for the nitrous. And... The car mechanically is pretty much ready to go racing. It's just, you know, waiting for a little odds and ends. And hopefully within a couple of weeks, um, 
would be out at the track having fun. So this is Broke Joe Builds, and this is what I had going on for the back half of the car, what, what was, how the rear end was set up. Um, a setup the way it was, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't recommend it. I would do it with at least a, a shackle. You know, set up with shackles, and you, it'd be a setup, it'd be fine for the street that way. But um, the way they had it with the spring bots, I wouldn't recommend driving on the street, even though I put probably over 10,000 miles on this car driving it on the street. Um, it's not recommended to drive it like that. Don't, don't do that with the spring bots or whatnot. Uh, it's not, uh, I would say, safe. And honestly, it, it's what is going to eventually become a hindrance because that's going to cause binding in your rear suspension. And when you start applying power, if your leaf spring starts to bind, it will cause wheel hop. So um, uh, it was eventually going to become a hindrance for me. So it was a hindrance for going fast, but more importantly, being safe. So that's all. This is Bro Joe Builds. And... Uh, to bring you a little bit more on this car in the future. God bless.